Thank you so very much, Mariana. Your words just inspire us, of course, but now someone else to inspire us. I should probably say, Maria Sefadari doesn't need an introduction, but let me go ahead and give you one. Maria Sefadari is a longtime Wikimedian who's been very active in the movement. She's held different roles over the years, including founding member and first vice chair of Wikimedia Spain, an IberaCoup co-founder, an officer of the Affiliations Committee, a part of the organizing team of Wiki Women Camp 2017, and the former chair of the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. She is deeply interested in participation gaps, knowledge equity, identifying structural problems that are present in the projects and the movement, and figuring out how to address them. Let's give a hand for Maria Sefadari. Thank you, Rossi. Uh, hi, everyone, in person and online. I'm going to be talking today about Wiki Women Camp, why we do it, and why I believe it's important that we keep doing it. First, let me start by saying that Wiki Women Camp is not an idea that one day just came out from thin air. Um, in the history of our movement, we have had many instances, many precursors of women uh, reaching out to other women across languages, across countries, across projects, to connect and to create the spaces where they could discuss the topics that were interesting to them and the challenges that they were facing. Um, something that was um, very interesting that started happening was that 10, 12 years ago, women were a minority. We're still a minority. But when chapters started uh, being created, it wasn't strange at all to have all male boards. Maybe you had a woman on the board. Maybe you even had two women in the board. Um, but you started having women that were participating in the projects. They were editors. And now they started being chapter leaders. And so they need uh, to connect and to have spaces where they could discuss these challenges grew. And it was in this context in which uh, a member of the board of Wikimedia Australia reached out to the then executive director of Wikimedia Argentina and said, we need a space where we can get together and support each other and build the skills necessary for us to thrive in this movement. And it was very intentional to choose Argentina as a place where uh, English was not the dominant language, and so the agenda would be created in common by the people from different countries. Um, something really interesting that happened in this first camp was that the women that were very used to being the only women in the, in the, in the room started noticing that what was happening to them was actually happening to other women, regardless of language, regardless of project, regardless of country. And there was a shift in mentality, in a sense of uh, women that before that camp thought, you know, these things that are happening to me, maybe I'm just not good enough, maybe I'm just not cut out to do this work, suddenly started realizing this is happening to these women as well. Maybe it's not that I'm not good enough. Maybe these things are happening to me and they're not happening to the men just because I'm a woman. And that understanding, what made a, it, it created the realization, a very powerful realization of we are not alone. It created bonds of kinship in the sense of uh, we are together in this and we are sharing experiences. Uh, please remember, 10, 12 years ago, it was not common at all uh, to have an, a shared understanding of what microaggressions were, of what a stalking was, of what harassment was. And so we're starting to identify and name situations and patterns of behavior that previous to that were absolutely normalized. The initial meetings were very small in scope. Um, in the very first one, uh, we were still trying to put the gender gap as a global issue that the movement needed to tackle. We were still trying to move away from explanations of 
uh, in the, that weren't along the lines of, you know, women don't participate because they're not interested in technology. We're still trying to get people to uh, deep, take a deep look at the projects and figure out why, what's happening. That first, we're not uh, having more women join us, but then we're losing the women that join us, right? And so acknowledging that this was an issue and that it needed to be in the global agenda to, in order to tackle it was still something that needed to happen. In the second camp in 2017, um, it, we were in the context of the strategy process. And so the goal was to integrate the perspectives and the needs of women into this, uh, into this process so that the final product could acknowledge uh, what women wanted. Of course, there was a space uh, to create and establish a network so that these women could reach out and uh, seek support or seek uh, partnerships. And capacity building was also high on the list of the things that happened in these camps. But the greatest commitment was um, the idea that we needed to keep doing this. This could not be a one-off. We needed to get, uh, keep getting together um, to create a community so that we could thrive, we could support each other to be the best version of ourselves, to gain the skills that we needed, so that we could succeed in this movement. And so it was, I think that it was really important that this could keep happening. I'm sure most of you have heard maybe once or twice that, you know, anyone can edit, anyone can participate, and if someone leaves, it's okay. Um, someone else will come and replace them. If you pause and think a little bit about this, it's a slightly disturbing understanding of a, what a community is. And this is something that women can help change in our movement. If we understand community as something that can help you thrive, that can help, you nur can help nurture you, be the best version of yourself, give you the skills, to succeed, and that allows you to participate with joy in the projects. That would be the ideal. Um, and for a lot of men, this is the reality. But for women, not so much. And this is something that we can help incorporate in our movement. Of course, I want to acknowledge uh, that when we try to uh, break the status quo and try to change the status quo, um, many times, because we are the minority, it can be perceived as trying to break things, trying to break the projects, trying to go against the community, and this has a cost. Um, regardless, it is really important um, that we focus on collective action. We need to be in the spaces where decision making and policy making happens. I want to, again, acknowledge how frustrating it can be to be sitting at the table with people that lack understanding or lack depth, but have the equal ability to build or break, and sometimes break. Uh, it can lead to burnout, and it's the cause of why we've lost a lot of women in the past. The original um, founders of Wiki Women Camp ha are no longer active in this movement, and that's true for many other women that have taken leadership positions and. Uh, that sadly, uh, we've lost their voices and their expertise. And yet it is important that we are present and that we don't work in the margins because sadly, if we are not at the table, uh, rest assured, we are gonna be in the menu. And I want to instill in you um, a sense of urgency. Uh, there is a deadline. Right now, um, we are not in the ideal situation, but we do have support. And as you've seen, we have, the support of the leadership of the foundation, the CEO, the chair, they believe in this work. They're here supporting it. But maybe in the future, we might have leadership that deprioritizes the gender gap. Progress for women is not inevitable. And it is very, very important not to take it for granted. And so the advantage or the great opportunity of Wiki Women Camp is that it allows us to reimagine the movement. We can take a look at the structures that conform our movement, and we can imagine how, would they, how should they be so that we could have a better inclusive movement. 
from article quality to leadership positions to funding. Imagine if we shifted from mere countenance of how many biographies of women do we have to, okay, how do we measure quality in articles related to women's health, abortion, gender violence? Um, how do we change access to leadership positions? Uh, what if for becoming an administrator, um, instead of focusing on edit count, we focus on the number of events or workshops that a person has led uh, and funding. What, it's funny because for funding, um, the groups that work the gender gap um, have to compete with groups that, for example, uh, work with trains. And don't get me wrong, I like trains, but it does feel odd that there's not a specific dedicated funding for, work, for the groups that specifically work the gender gap. And if we say that the gender gap is a priority, then we have to take action to show that it is a priority. And so Wiki Women Camp is this opportunity where we get together, we rethink the structures of the movement, and we, we try to reimagine how we can make a movement that's open and that's inclusive, and in essence, a better movement for all of us. Thank you. Thank you.